How's it going everybody? It's Aparicio. Today what we're going to be doing is looking at DaVinci Resolve 19's new film look creator. We're going to build a look off of it, see if it's any good, see if you should use it, how to use it. So that being said, let's get right into it. Okay, here's our shot. Shot on the Aria Mira. I wanted to include the sky in the shot, so that's why I chose this shot. I'm going to be using the film look creator after I do my correction. If you only care about the uh, film look creator, go ahead and skip to that part of the video. But let's just walk through what I did for my corrections. I have my CSC node here, my input color space here, RA wide gamma 3, input gamma, RE log C3, output color space, DaVinci wide gamma, output gamma. On my CST out, uh, I have DaVinci wide gamma as the input color space. The input gamma is DaVinci intermediate. Output color space is Rec 709, and output gamma is gamma 2.4. Uh, I did primary corrections. I just barely tweaked the gain, or uh, lift gamma and gain, and then the white balance, uh, balanced it out a little bit. All I used was the offset here, nothing really much to do was pretty well balanced already. And then I adjusted my uh, contrast with the curves and then my saturation. I just brought it down a little bit in the HDR wheels where the global saturation is right here. So now, so let's add a serial node. Let's look up film look creator, okay? Let's see what we got. So right off the bat, let's turn it off, okay? Turn it back on. It already gave us a look. We didn't even do anything. Right here, it's gonna be um, defaulting to 65 millimeter. There's a color blend, there's an effects blend. You see if we put the color blend all the way down, the color settings are kind of shut off. So let's go ahead and put the highlights all the way up, the exposure all the way up, and the saturation all the way up in the color settings. If we put the color blend down, we are just bringing everything down that we did in the, in the color settings. Let's just undo all that because that was horrible that was trash and then we have the effects blend which is going to be your grain vignette halation which it's going to be taking that all away it's already been set to custom here because we've manipulated things but let's go ahead and do clean slate to start from scratch and then you can go down uh here's color space overrides if you wanted to if you didn't use two CSTs here, then you can go right into the color space overrides. Put in your input color space, input gamma, which is gonna be RE gamut three, and then uh, RE log C, and then you would put in rec 709 and gamma 2.4 or 2.2, and then there you go. Uh, I don't do this because sometimes I wanna pull back everything I just did and blend it into my correction that I already made, and I can do that at the bottom here. But when I do my color space overrides here, when I pull this back, it just goes back to a log look instead of into my corrected image, which I don't want. Um, film look, so now we can kind of manually do this i'm gonna put the film look up about midway and then we have options of our core look all right core look you have your vintage elated akasaka there's a lot of different ones you can use here i would say starting out using this stick to cinematic and then you have the skin bias go down it's a little warmer darker maybe more green and you go up uh, it's a little brighter more rosy then you come to the color settings which I don't mess a whole lot around with because I already did a lot of this stuff in my correction for the image. So the exposure, contrast, highlights, fade. Let's look at what fade does. Just kind of brings the highlights and shadows closer together. Fades out the image. White balance, obviously we know what that does. Tint, green, subtractive saturation. This is probably the only thing I'll be using. Obviously, subtractive saturation is increasing the saturation without really increasing the luminance. As you can see here on the scopes, if I put it up, brightness isn't really going down. Uh, if anything, some of the luminance or uh, some of the exposure is going down. So, and then richness, kind of similar to density, how rich is the color uh, without blasting that, uh, the luminance. Bleach bypass gives it the bleach bypass look, which is a desaturated, uh, kind of overexposed look. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, yep, turn up the subtractive saturation. Uh, I'll leave the richness there. Okay, and then I'm gonna enable split toning. I'm just gonna put it up a little bit. You can mess with the hue angle a little bit. I think right there is good for me, but if you could see what it does, just moving the hue 
of the split tone. We know what split tone does. We're adding more colors to the highlights and the shadows, mainly warmer colors to the highlights, cooler colors to the shadows. That's what we want for a more filmic look. And we can pivot how much coolness is in the shadows to lower midtones and how much warmth is in the highlights to higher midtones. I don't know if that made sense. Let's see a spot that I like. I like it right there. And vignette, you can go ahead and enable that. I'm gonna put the size pretty low, the amount good there. Halation, go ahead and enable halation, but when you do, if you wanna be more dramatic and see more of it throughout the whole image, disable highlights only, all right? And then you can see it if we blast it up, it's crazy. The radius, okay, so let's go put everything up. See how crazy it is? So halation, obviously adding a, a film quality, which gives a little glow around the highlights, a little warm glow around it. Everyone loves halation, dude. Everyone loves halation. Put the saturation down a little bit. There we go. And then we have bloom, kind of doing the same thing, adding a subtle glow around highlights. It's super subtle, so play around with that to see where your sweet spot is. And then grain is a big one for emulating film. You're gonna wanna do that. Let's zoom in here. Let's go down. Let's enable that grain. I'm gonna leave it at 35 millimeters since it's the most universally used uh, film stock for uh, most major motion pictures. So amount, you wanna get crazy? All right, so I put mine kind of in the middle. I'm gonna put the saturation down. I don't want any saturation in my grain. I just don't. Then there's flicker and gate weave. I don't think I wanna introduce any of this into my picture. But if you want to, go ahead and do that. Yeah, the flicker is kind of giving a little pulse to the exposure of the image. I don't even want to mess with that. And then the gate weave. It's a little complicated. Let me read you the real definition of gate weave. These controls mimic the slight horizontal and vertical shift of the image uh, as the film is mechanically pulled through the camera's gate. You decide if you want to do that. I don't, not for this look. And then you can enable film gate, as you can see what it does and then increase the horizontal and vertical axes. I'm gonna disable that. And then you have the global blend. Like I said, it brings it back to our original corrected image, which I like. And I don't think I wanna really blend it into the original image. I kinda like how it is. I'll add more vignette to be, I like it. It's subtle, it's not over the top. It's not an over the top film look. It has that, the subtle highlights and the, and the subtle coolness in the shadows, all very subtle. But the film look creator lets you, you know, create your own custom film look, you know, be creative. There you go. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Go use the film look creator thing and, you know, see if you like it. I like it. You can be creative, practice with it. Like, subscribe, comment. It helps the channel out. Thank you. See you in the next one.